I was going to put my nightclub act back together. So I had a nightclub act, my wife and I, and we traveled for the Fairmont circuits and all that. Because I loved being out there in front of people, see? And uh, as soon as it ended, um, I went back to my home in Palm Springs, and we started to start to piece things together, see what we were going to put old stuff, new stuff, putting an act together. Because, you know, to me, seven years on television, the best thing. And how am I going to top it? And uh, then my agent, they came up with three other projects, and they were all negative in some kind of way. One was a, a Western pilot, and they, I was going to be playing Murray Slaughter in a cowboy suit. I said, that's not going to go. And um, there was another one, a big hour-long show about took place during the Depression. It was one hour long, and that one smile that was very depressing. I didn't want to do that. And then another one came up uh, about some people that fell off from society. Jimmy Carter was president then, and they were, not, they were knocking him, and I didn't have anything to do with that. My agent called and said, Aaron Spelling wants you to do this thing called The Love Boat. He says, he said, I think it sucks, but you want to read it. I said, sure. So he sent it over, and I took it down to Palm Springs, and I started to read it. I said, this thing could go. This is a very commercial kind of thing. So I had my wife read it. I thought the same thing. I, knowing what it was about, I asked my young gardener, I said, would you, he told me about his children, would you sit with your children, would you watch a show like this? He said, yes, I would. Sheila McRae, who was a fabulous actress, was visiting us. I said, Sheila, what do you think about it? It's good. So we decided to do it. How was it described to you? Well, all that it sucked. That's the only thing I heard, you know? I said, the love boat, that sounds like something Doug McClure did, you know? It just sounds like one of those things. And, and then I started to read it, and it was like Love American Style. It had three different kinds of stories, and the thing that got me was there was one very poignant story in there. And it, plays this old, it was an old, old Jewish guy that got on the, board, on the ship, and he wanted to die at sea. He was very old and infirm. And because there was no more places in the cemetery and all of his sons were buried. So he wanted to die at sea when they throw you overboard. They put you in a thing and thing. What happens is he meets a woman and they really start to enjoy each other's companionship. And it's beautiful. Phil Silvers played that part and Audra Lindley played the other part. Fabulous actress. And just before they're about to, he, not, just before they're about to get home, and they have all these plans, she goes to him. He doesn't, doesn't, and he's dead. That just affected me. So I said, if they're going to have, and Aaron said, okay, they're going to have one poignant story. We're going to try to do that. One broad comedy story and one sophisticated. I said, wow, with big stars. I said, wow, and these five regulars. Wow, and the captain, double wow. I talked to my agent, and I said, let's put it together. Let me put it together. The great thing about it is that, if you want to hear this, Aaron Spelling said, I know you like to do plays. I keep talking about that. He said, I know you like to do games. He said, we can work around you. You can be small one week. You can be big the next week. Just say yes. And I didn't never know why he was so insistent upon me doing it. I mean, there's so many actors around. Now, the Mary Tyler Moore show went off about maybe a month before this meeting. And uh, so what happens is I wind up doing the biggest musical of my life, Annie Get Your Gun with Debbie Reynolds and Gower Champion. And I'm rehearsing that. We made the pilot. I'm rehearsing that. Everything is great. We're going to open in San Francisco. I forgot about the pilot. I was so excited about this. And I came home one night. We're opening in San Francisco about a week and a half. I come home one night. And uh, my wife said, Aaron wants you to call. They sold the love boat. And, oh. Patty, what am I going to do? I said, if I'm going to pick, he's going to have me. I said, I'm going to stay with this show. I waited my whole life to do a musical like this, and I'm going to. So I called Aaron on the phone. He said, oh, they pushed the buttons. The ratings were so high. He come, and he said, um, but I said, Aaron, I said, I'm opening in, in a week and a half. I'm, I'm opening in San Francisco, and Andy, get your gun. He said, well, I told you we'll work around you, so we'll work around you. I said, you will, because a lot of people, you know, will say that and give lip service, but when it comes down to reality, he said, yes. 
So what we did, I opened, we started shooting. I would leave the studio about 4.35 in the afternoon. I get a plane, somebody would meet me in San Francisco, I would have something, we'd do the show, fly back, and then work and do that over and over and over, except for the weekends. And my wife used to say, there's a man that gets in my bed at two o'clock in the morning and leaves at six, I hope to God it's my husband. You know, because she never saw me, and I would be up there on the weekends. Well, we did it, a big smash, the show was a smash. And I got a little, little part on the low book. That's cool, because Aaron said I will do it. And he was a man of his word. And boy, I know a lot of people who would not have done what he did, and he allowed me to really do, and I was with that play for about three or four months. We brought it down to L.A., you know, big smash and everything else. At that time, it was the highest grosser of any musical they had with the Dorothy Chandler. Uh, they exceeded that now. Anyway, uh, that's how that all happened, and that's how I got, and then I find out later, it was Fred Silverman that said, get me Gavin McLeod. So I had an occasion, one evening, they had a big thing at ABC, the 25th anniversary of Leonard Goldens, and everybody was there. And Fred was, came in with his wife, a great wife. My wife said, why don't you go thank Fred for, you know, I said, you're, you're right. So I went over, I, made, I said, I want to thank you so much for suggesting me. It finally came to be that we know how this happened. And I said, thank you. He said, oh, that's, he said, it, it worked. And that was the important thing. The next day he left and went to NBC. And then I was doing a show with uh, Marie Osmond. She had a special. I was doing, I was holding her in my arm and singing this beautiful song to her. And Fred showed up with a big cigar. He says, I created a monster. I created a monster. You know? And that's, that's how I found out how I got that part. Because I always wondered, why, how would Doug Kramer, think, what Aaron think about me playing from a, a Murray Slaughter? Because Aaron probably knew a lot of things I did before. But still, to play the captain was the whole, because they made the pilot twice before of the love boat. Never went. Did so, you have to audition at all for that? No, I just went up, he just sent me the script. Went up there, and we had this big talk in Aaron's estate, the previous one. Uh, Aaron Spelling, Doug Kramer, and Henry Coleman. And, and that's what he said, say yes, say yes. I said, no, my, I, I said, my agent told me you give great interview when I'm not supposed to say yes. And, so we eventually said yes, and it was a, that was a terrific. Doing that show was so special for me because when I was a little boy, I used to go and see theater, like my uncle would take me. And then I got older, I'd go myself, and eventually didn't need anybody for anything. I'm just so involved in it. These people that I used to want to be like on the stage, you know, and then in movies, were coming on this show. And I had a chance to be with them. It was like that little boy that wanted to be an actor, a dream. I never, ever thought this would. I wanted to do one Broadway show. I wanted to do one movie. And then I would go teach or do whatever I did. You know? But it wasn't like that. And I remember going to the captain's table one morning, quarter to seven. There was Helen Hayes and Morris Evans and Mildred Natwin. Talking about how nervous they were because it was the first day shooting, it never ended. So John Mills, I welcomed him aboard, and the hand was his hand was all wet. So we went to the side after the rehearsal. He said, "It's rather like going back to school, isn't it, old boy?" I said, "That's what it's like. It's like that every Monday we come in here with new people, new wonderful stuff." I held Olivia de Havilland in my arms, and I remember my grandmother taking me to see her in the Snake Pit, or to each his own. And here I am. I said, boy, if she could see me now. Yeah. So uh, the show was great. I mean, it was, the show was what the show was, and it, it was wonderful for the cruise industry. Princess Cruises are still reaping the reward. Every cruise line still is reaping the reward of the love boat being on the air. And uh, it, it was terrific. We had a wonderful gang. The regulars were wonderful people, good actors, you know, in different age ranges and things like that.